Hey guys, this is Ken from Gotta Watch Em All. Just a quick note on this episode. My audio file on this recording was corrupted, so during the editing process, I lost the entire first half of the episode of my recording. So I was able to use a backup reference file that I had that the quality is less than stellar. So I just wanted to apologize ahead of time for the quality of my voice. For about the first 30 minutes of the podcast, it improves in the second half. So just sorry about that, and uh, yeah, go catch them all. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 24 of Gotta Watch a Ball. I am one of your hosts, Ken Pescatore, joined by my co-host, Adam Tuttle. Adam, how are you? What's going on? Very wonderful. I don't even know if that's proper <laughs> English, but I'm doing excellent. Dude, it's been a fun week. This has been a good week. It's been epic. So, you know, it's, it's funny because... I could always count on at least like two or three screenshots from you to the, uh, you know, a day of texting from, from Pokemon go. And this week was, <laughs> was no different. I mean, there's just so much going on. And I, I think we should start off the episode by saying how awesome your the last hour has been for you. <laughs> so, all right, let's put it into perspective. I, I get out of work. Not a big deal. I take the long way home and I, you know, I drop a lucky egg just roll through town, hitting all the Pokestops and, you know, whatever Pokemon I get on my Go Plus. And then I have my phone hooked up and I look down for a second. There's this giant tan orangish blob and I'm like, Dragonite, 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 Dragonite. <laughs> and so I, you know, I tap on it a whole bunch of times and I'm like, I need to get it. I'm going to turn around. And then like, I got it. And I, so I pulled over. I'm like, I need to pull over. I need to focus. I'm like Golden Raz, <laughs> Ultra Ball, and I'm sitting here, I'm doing the slow curveball motion. Throw the first one, it knocks it back. I'm like, Arr. throw the next one, it catches it, it's like, room, room, and then <laughs> pops it out, gets out, and I'm like, oh, it better not run on me. Another Golden Raz, and I'm like, all right, I'm just throwing it straight. I threw it straight, he knocks it away. I'm like, great, so now this is like three or four Ultra Balls gone. Throw another one, hits it right in the face, gets a great, and I catch it. I've never even seen a Dragonite in the wild. That's so crazy. I've never either. And like yesterday, I was driving around, and in that same, not this exact area, but between where I found two Dratinis, the Dragonite spawned. That's crazy. Well, maybe there's like a in bi- between, biome shift or something. Yeah, in between the two Pokestops. Like, one was further in town, and one was in a like building complex area and just in the middle right on the busy street i was like wow and then i and then because of these these articuno raids and legendary bird raids i've joined a instant message raid group which is the best thing ever and i just immediately (laughs) posted to it and two people were like hey we're in that area where exactly and i posted it and two other people caught it you know and i hope other people in that in the raid group you know caught it but then immediately after somebody reported that not even a minute away at another pokestop was a togetic and i'm like i need that so two entries to my pokedex (laughs) i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna post on instagram a whole bunch of like my week prior to like because i used a (laughs) bunch of rare candies just to get a sand slash just to get a doug trio just to get um, (laughs) um Marowak, you know, like those things aren't common around me. So with the hatches and like, I'm so close. So I use like three or four candies on each just to get the evolution, just to get them in my Pokedex. Nice. So this week has been huge, at least for my Pokedex. I also am a member of, uh, you know, a bunch of different Facebook groups for raiding. And I have a local, you know, Monmouth County, New Jersey group that is super active And people typically will post on the spot kind of stuff. And then there's going to be more, you know, the longer term, you know, planning stuff. So earlier in the week, I knew I had off on Friday. I knew uh, Articuno was going away. So I had kind of planted a couple seeds on a few different 
pages, you know, saying, look, I'm looking for groups in this area. And there was this one group that typically travels around uh, Asbury Park, New Jersey, and the surrounding towns from there. And that that group happened to be out. So I was I was super excited about it because they, they roll super deep. You know, I get kind of running behind. I'm like, yeah, I told them I was going to be there at five o'clock. I didn't get out to like six o'clock. And when I get out there, I don't see anybody. And then, like, I'm messaging everybody, and no one's responding. I'm like, what is going on? I was like, they obviously, they're in a raid right now. And I'm looking around on the map, and, you know, I'm driving up and down the main strip, and, you know, I see a couple of raids here and there, but I didn't see any groups. So I ended up, uh, you know, the the goal of the Friday day trip, or the Friday trip that we had was to, to get Articuno. I still hadn't caught one. So... Uh, we found one, and there was no one there. So I said, look, let's let's just keep going. Let's just try to find the group. We drove around, couldn't find anybody. Nobody was responding at that point. And then Melissa's like, you know what, just turn around and go back to that Articuno that we were just at where no one was. She goes, we'll just wait it out. And we went back, and, and as we pulled in, there was like 25 people already standing in the park. And I was like, oh, found the group. And it was like from there, it was awesome because – they are super organized, and what we ended up doing was breaking into two groups. We had 37 total. Wow. And yeah, it was crazy. And so we ended up doing uh, a Mystic group and then a Instinct Valor group. That you know, Mystic always has the most. So they, I think they had like you know, the bulk of the people, and then it was just you know equal equal parts from from Valor and Instinct. But that's what we did. Uh, knocked the Articuno out. It was my son's birthday. And my son caught it. Uh, Melissa did not catch the first one. And uh, she was all bummed out. Um, You know, we were only planning on going to to just to get one. And I caught it. So I was like, all right, we can go home now. (laughs) Yeah. You know, (laughs) the second everyone's wrapping up and doing high fives and all that, it's like, all right, another one just popped, you know, a mile down the road. And (laughs) it's like, all right, let's go. Went to the one down the road. I caught it again. (laughs) Melissa did not catch it. She's like, oh my god, you know. Now we're like an hour, an hour. And we went, planned on going out for a half an hour, forty five minutes. An hour, and that we're already out an hour plus. Just as we're about to leave, all right, another one popped in Bradley Beach. You know, right along the beach. We're like, all right, <laughs> let's go. So we drove fifteen minutes out to that one. You know, same group, thirty five people plus, knocked it down. Melissa didn't catch it. Three in a row ran from her. <laughs> Wow. I felt so bad. That is hard. You know, because she she worked all, you know, she worked today. She didn't have, have a chance to go out to, to catch one on its last day. So, you know, I've got – I caught three in a row. I'm very fortunate. So I, I've got trading uh, ammunition for her. You know, I, I'll, I'll make sure she gets one. She was like, man, this is my team's bird, and I don't even have it because she's mystic. It's, it was crazy. But I, it was so fun. I've played with these people before and I've played in, in big groups before and I've experienced like the whole, you know, run down the street and all that kind of stuff. But I got to say, doing this cooperative thing, like really the the mission statement of what Niantic was trying to do with this, com- you know, community based play, it made the game so much fun. This was like probably the most fun I've had since launch week of the game, just, you know, because I was out of, out of my mind then. And that, it was just it was just an awesome week. It was really cool just getting out there and meeting people and everyone just being, you know, super friendly and super cool. And, you know, it, it was just so much fun. And then just going from from raid to raid to raid to raid, it was just like, oh, man, this is this is super cool. So it was it was an excellent week, man. I had I had a blast. And as of uh, as of tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern time, Moltres is live. So uh, this week is going to be all about catching Moltres, so it should be it should be an interesting one uh i know i can't i can't wait um <laughs> i mean even the same goes for me like i'm in the same boat after going to like three or four raids like you start to see all the same people and everybody's like oh hey you were at the last one and then you start introducing yourself you're like hey my name's adam like you know and it just it just gets bigger and bigger and it's like it was awesome like i went to a burning shadows pre-release this weekend and that so that's on saturday and you know, I went to a, I saw a raid downtown, you know, raid at the beginning. I've let everyone know. I would, there was only three people, myself, my brother and somebody else. And I'm like, when can everybody be here? And the pre-release started at 10 15. Everybody was saying, you know, we're at 45 minutes out, half hour out, 15 minutes out. So like, <laughs> I'm like, I can't sit for that, you know? So we went home, got our, our cards and got ready. I dropped my brother off just to take separate cars. Cause 
I had to work later in the day. I quickly went and was able to join the raid, which was like 30 people deep. And <laughs> we split into two groups again, so si- awesome. similar to similar to how yours worked, where the, we did talk about, you know, the teams splitting into teams. And it was awesome. Like my, I'm instinct. So I was able to get the bonuses for the first time out of like right. all five of my raids that I've lost. So even with the extra balls, I still missed them. It was super, I was super salty. But, you know, it happened, whatever. I go to the pre-release. I, you know, I get my packs, which I posted on our Instagram. And then I sat down for my first match, play, win. And I'm like, awesome. I look on the map and in my, in my view, in Pokemon Go, I see a Lugia spawn and an Articudo spawn. <laughs> and I'm like, those are five minutes away. Thinking about like how much time's in the round. I'm like... I think I can hit them both before I <laughs> before I have to be back here. So I left, which I should not have done. But, how'd that work out for you? <laughs> um, well, it worked out. I caught the Articuno. It, but like there was a group of like 30 something more people. And I'm like, so we had to do two groups. And then there was one person that just had connective issues. I mean, I had connective issues, but it worked out for me at the end. Like I was able to jump back in at like this, the, the last second. So, I mean, it stuck me with a Chansey, which is annoying, but I was able to catch Articuno on that one. And then everybody in there, they were like, all right, let's go catch the Lugia. So we, and then everybody goes to the Lugia. I don't know. We split into two groups of, I think, 18 or something. It was insane. And again, we did the whole group thing. I had the most balls I've ever had. I think I had like 12 or 13 and I was like, awesome. And I didn't catch the Lugia. So I was pretty upset about that. <laughs> I was able to go back after I we did the two raids, and that took a little longer than I anticipated. So because I had missed the second round and didn't show up for the beginning of the third round, I was dropped. Oh. So unfortunately, by Pokemon rules, I was not allowed to you know claim my three packs at the end, but I still had fun. Oh, that's right, the three yeah. packs. So it hurt a little bit, but... In the end, it all worked out because I got my Articuno, and it was definitely worth that. Yeah, you know, it, it's there was such a, a priority in the air of just, like, when I was out fighting these Articuno raids because everybody knew it was going away, and, you know, it was just a, a mad dash to try to people to get their first one or someone to get, you know, one with good IVs. And I think one of the ones I have is a 98%. Like, it's got perfect, uh, perfect stamina and defense, so wish it had attack, but... You know, I, I think I have three now, so I, I was so I was so relieved after I got that first one. I was so relieved. I know I caught the Articuno. It was like my day has been made. Right, I can, I can and then I can stop now. And then knowing that, like, you know, everybody was like freaking out. It's like then there's miscommunication. Does it does it go away Sunday? Does it go away Monday? Like, so it's just been insane. And then Sunday morning, right, like right before work, I leave like an extra ten fifteen minutes early. I'm able to snipe. A, a raid like with eight minutes left i was like guys just wait for me i'm literally <laughs> like a minute away and then this group waited for me and we got in and we were able to take it down and i caught it in my like, third ball i was like oh man <laughs> i am so relieved that now i don't have to freak out for lugia now yeah. i don't have to freak out for an articuno and then i even saved my repass from today to make sure that i mean i i opened a close all day today so i saved my raid pass so i'd be able to use it tomorrow and then get the second one and not have to spend money to get two raids done tomorrow right so hopefully i can catch a moltres tomorrow well you know they they've been very unclear too about when what what the status of lugia is so you know they made it very clear about the rollout of the birds and like you said there was a little bit of confusion because they would you know they had articuno ending oh we're recording this by the way on july 31st 2017 so they had articuno <laughs> going away on july 31st and they had moltres coming on, on july 31st so it was a little confusing they didn't have a time posted and apparently by 8 you know close to 8 p.m. pacific time which is already 11 o'clock you know here on the east coast you know so our raid clock had already stopped and but apparently Moltres was was seen on the west coast, so everyone will have it tomorrow morning. Um, but you know you you have a week to catch it, so you gotta gotta get out there and go. 
I'm so excited for it, though. Yeah, I got, dude. I, I, you know, I'm just. I got a. Oh, and I hatched a a almost a near perfect geodude today. So I'm excited that I'm going to be able to build up another golem. Wow, that's awesome. Yes. So because that's such a good counter for all the birds. Can't wait. Can't wait to do that. A couple other go related news news tidbits here I want to cover. Um, and you hadn't heard about this prior to me letting you know just before. So apparently there has been a pretty significant class action lawsuit filed against Niantic for what happened at GoFest. So this one guy that I guess traveled nationally, I believe is an American guy, traveled to GoFest, whatever happened at the event, gets home and says, look, you know, I'm really not satisfied with my hundred poker coins. I'm going to sue them for, you know, falsely, you know, promoting an event of all these things were going to happen and they didn't happen. And it's like a 25 page complaint. I'll link to it in the show notes, but it's a pretty significant complaint uh, against Niantic. Now, I don't know the status of it right now, but it, you know, sometimes these things gain gain momentum and, you know, with 20,000 people attending the event, you know, it opens the class up pretty significantly. So it's, it's a little, it's a little interesting. Like this might be an interesting thing to follow, but Come on now, you know, it's such, a, we live in such a highly litigated world. It's like, really, you're going to, you know, if you go to a concert and the band stinks, you're going to sue the band for your hotel room? Like, I Yeah, don't the know. band didn't play that one song that I really <laughs> like. I'm upset about that. So, because that's I, happened and I didn't get upset, you know, you know, oh man, well, you know, maybe they'll do it upset, next time. Just don't sue. Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. I, I just, I don't know. It's, it's a little crazy. One other interesting thing they uh, they put out on the PokemonGoLive.com was they announced that the Safari Zones that are taking place in Europe, the Safari Zones, they're going to be postponing the first few events. So there was August 5th in Copenhagen and Prague and August 12th in Stockholm and Amsterdam. Those events they're actually postponing without a new makeup date yet. So we don't know when those are going to be happening, but they said that the... Pikachu outbreak event on August 14th, and then the events in September that are coming to France, Spain, and Germany are all still on schedule. This obviously has to be related to the issues that happened at GoFest, and maybe they say they need to do some kind of infrastructure preparations or something like that, that they need to postpone these events. And these events are in a completely different format than GoFest. So it's really interesting that they did this, and, you know, People had already booked travel and all that stuff for these events, and it's like, man, you just you just can't escape it. You know, no matter which way you look, there's just someone somewhere is always going to be like, you know, affected, you know, in some heavy duty way. It's just, man, I, I just they they got to get these next series of events. They just have to get them all right. And you know, I, I'm I'm very optimistic. You know, I'm, I'm very confident that they can. You know, they're not going to let something like Go Fest happen again. They can't. Yeah, they won't. Pokemon. I think in general we'll be like, no, that can't happen. Right, right. I mean, because Niantic, you know, they are backed by the Pokemon company. I mean, they have to be for the game, but Pokemon themselves know it's a, it's a brand issue, so right, you, they're not going to let it happen. They can't. They can't. And then finally, in one little uh, last tidbit of Pokemon Go news, there was a really cool link that I saw that the Pokemon Go uh, Japan Twitter account put out. And they released some really awesome gear, some t-shirts and like a neck towel, like a muffler style towel, an iPhone case and pins and buttons for each of the the teams. And I want this stuff and I can't read Japanese and I just want to order it. (laughs) I know. These are pretty sweet. They they look, the t-shirts kind of look similar to the the team shirts that they were rocking at GoFest, like the staff. So it's just very, very plain, but the towels are awesome and, you know. You can't go wrong with pins. It's like, I just want it. I just want them. I just want them all. I got to I gotta want them all. Got to want them all. I figured I'd just talk about that because, you know, we haven't gotten, you know, we haven't got anything like that in the U.S. store. And it's interesting because they had, you know, a merchandise booth at GoFest. You'd think that they would have an online store somewhere. I mean, can't imagine them thinking that the products wouldn't sell. Like, I mean, they put up real-life versions of the in-game clothing and stuff like that people Done. people be making it rain making it yeah, rain take my money take my money exactly 
it is it is crazy. Have you bought any of the uh, the promotional boxes? These boxes that have come out in Go. Which ones? The the ones that are in the shop right now for that have. Oh like, yes, you know, yes, the one with six raid passes. Yeah. So this is like you know I, I'm in this this position where it's like it's such a good value you know but like how much how many of these do I actually buy? So it's it's I'm getting to the point now where my ancillary items like raid passes and rare candy and you know things like that are starting to build up in my inventory. You know, I've got 40 lucky eggs and you know all this stuff and it's like I have over 100 items that are just like man, if I had that room, I'd really like to have like, you know, pokeballs, an extra 100 pokeballs in my inventory rather than all this stuff clogging it up. But Yeah. You know, I know you saw my my inventory. Yes. I have like six of every special item. And yes. I'm like, Ugh, when am I going to evolve six Steelix? I only have one Onyx. Well, that's like the dragon scale. It's like getting to a hundred. You know, horsey candy is takes forever. Yep. The, the game is back up to number two on the iTunes store. So you know, the a lot of people, you know, with all the negative press that happened after GoFest, they're saying, "Oh, this game is done. They're finished." You know, and it's come back so incredibly strong, and the community has really just risen to the occasion and show their support with their wallets and, you know, and in the world we live in and with free to play game, that's, you know, you want to keep it alive. You gotta, you gotta, gotta speak with your wallet and the, the people have spoke and it's back up to number two in the iTunes store. So awesome. Can't get mad at any of that. Can't go hard enough. A couple other little tidbits before we get into the episode. I wanted to talk about more mega stones being distributed in the main series games. There is a uh, mystery gift code that you can use. I believe it is Sable Volant. I'll put the link in the description. I have no idea what the relevance of that word is that they use for the special code. Uh, but, you know, go into Sun and Moon, and the four that you're going to get are Obama Snow, Agron, Magnetric, and Tyranitar Megastones. So, free stuff is always good. And I think you have to do this by. What is the cutoff for this? I don't know what the cutoff is, but they, they do these periodically and they're just constantly pumping this out. So, Go get your free stuff. Uh, Pokemon TCG. I love that they put a feature on Pokemon.com of the Metagross deck. And you were saying this is pretty much the deck that you've been running? Yes. So I'll I'll link to it in the description so you can kind of see what is going on here. But I mean, it, it seems, you know, looking at the layout of the deck, it's like it seems very easy to see how this deck would make sense. <laughs> I mean, the only difference that I have is uh, I, I run two Alolan Vulpix, and uh, instead of the Mimikyu, I run a Cobalion from, I believe it's Steam Siege, um, and it it has, like, Revenge Blast and does 30 plus 30 for every prize card your opponent's taken, so it only your opponent only gains one prize. So, I mean, you know, you have that as your last, you know, main attacker or whatever it comes up. You know, that's 150 damage if they've taken five prizes. Yeah, the, and you said two energy, right? For 150 damage, that's... Yeah, so that's, that's one attachment and then <laughs> one so awesome. one geotech system. Or no energy attachments and two geotech systems. Nuts, nuts. But yeah, there's. I, I like how they have this kind of little interactive deck list that Pokemon.com puts up every so often. You can kind of scroll through the cards with your, with your cursor... And it'll show you a picture of the card. It's just very, very cool. There was also you, you we're you know, I want to have in the show notes here to talk about the pre release event. So you, you went but you kinda, you know, ended up get catching the raid bug when you were there. But yes. <laughs> um you know, it's my work schedule has changed and I you know, I work every Saturday now, so it's like I can't get out to these pre release events anymore and it bums me out like crazy because they're so much fun and yes, I love they are. I love getting the, the the stamped card, like a foil stamp. Yep, I miss those cards. My brother got the um the crab but crab domino one, and that came with like two Rhyperiors, and Rhyperiors are like the card I want right now. All right, so let's get into this episode. It is episode twenty four. It's called Prime Ape Goes Bananas. The original air date of the episode was the U.S. air date was October ninth, nineteen ninety eight. And this is uh, this is an episode that, as soon as it starts, it has some pretty unique music, like uh, intro music into the episode, and it's like the music makes me so happy. <laughs> like I, you know, I watched the episode twice, <laughs> and you know, the first time I watched, it, I'm like, man, this song is really fun. This is like, you know, it's just the happy-go-lucky kind of music, 
And the second time around, I was like, I was looking forward to it so much and it, and it totally delivered. But it starts off with this actually, you know, this very, very cool, playful style of music. And you see Professor Oak sitting, he's in a shoji, like a, uh, you know, the Japanese kind of rice paper partition wall, you know, kind of house. And he's sitting there drinking tea and there's kind of Pokemon floating around everywhere. You see Slowpoke, Poliwag, Poliwrath, Bellsprout, Dodrio. They're just kind of it's just this beautiful, serene, you know, Professor Oak's, you know, domain. And you hear a phone start to ring. And this is kind of a throwback to episode 13, the Mystery at the Lighthouse episode, where Ash calls Professor Oak on the video phone that's in the lighthouse so you hear the this video phone start to ring on Professor Oak's side, and you see Ash's Krabby holding the video phone above his head, kind of like walking it over to Professor Oak, you know, you know, as, as a yeah, favor. Yeah, Professor <laughs> Oak's just totally like calm, and he's like, the phone's ringing, but yes. nothing bothers me. Yes, he's totally just like nothing's better than tea. Like he's being just like super, he's super mellow. You know, he's like, thank you, Krabby. And as he picks up the phone, it's it's Ash on the other end, and you know he's like, Ash, you know how are you? I, I've been waiting to hear from you. You know what's going on? And Ash wastes no, absolutely no time. He just comes out with it, and he's like, Hey, I wanted to show you this. You know, check out my gym badges. And he like pulls open his you know his jacket to show the badges on the inside. And he's like, Pretty impressive, huh? Like he's acting all cocky. And Professor Oak is completely unimpressed and like with the most very most intentional sarcasm in his voice possible. He says, ah, only four badges. And Ash kind of like falls over and he's like, <laughs> he goes, he goes, all of your rivals, even Gary, which really gets under Ash's skin. He's like, have five badges and uh, they've all been through Celadon City. And if that's what we remember from last episode, Celadon is where they're headed next. Ash is all bummed out. He's like. You know, worried that he's going to be falling behind the other trainers. He's clearly, you know, they're they're already a town ahead of him. And Professor Oak questions why he hasn't seen any of Ash's Pokemon come through, and that you know, Krabby was the last one. So Ash kind of says hello to Krabby, and Professor Oak decides to rub it in a little bit. And he's like, you know, Gary has already caught thirty Pokemon, and this is like, <laughs> Ash is like, what thirty Pokemon? <laughs> like he absolutely can't believe it, you know, because he's only you know, six or seven Pokemon deep now. And, you know, they start talking about Krabby and Professor Oak says, oh yeah, we've, we've become very good friends with his time, you know, during his time here, you know, we're into drinking tea and writing poetry and it cuts into this, you know, one of these little blurbs that we've been talking about over the past couple of weeks of just this ridiculous little cut scene of Professor Oak performing some poetry with Krabby kind of like standing off on the side. It's very bizarre. And, you know, he kind of makes a lesson out of it. And he says, look, you know, to, for me to be a poet, I need rhymes. For you to be a Pokemon trainer, you know, you need Pokemon. Like, this is this is the lesson that you could take from this. It cuts back to uh, to Ash, and he's just like, Ugh. and then it's just like one of those scenes where, you know, it's just an overview of, like, him just sitting at the payphone and, like, a little tumbleweed fl flies by. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> he's just so sad. You know, Misty and Pikachu, they're just sitting down on a on a rock eating eating some donuts. They look like rice cakes. They do look like I thought they were sushi when I first saw it. I mean, I don't know. I was like, oh man, those are some good looking rice cakes. And then uh Ash, you know, he walks by Misty and she notices Ash is down. She says she suggests that he have a donut because they always cheer her up. And then Brock chimes in, you know, nothing beats a jelly filled donut. And he just wants to keep moving and he says, Isn't there a gym at Celadon City? And Brock points down the path that they're on, and he's like, sure is, that way. Only a day's walk from here. And Misty, she's all like, unlike all those wannabes, you gotta make it to the Pokemon League your own way. Right. And I thought that that was like, Yeah, that was cool. You know, Misty's really like, you know, teaching him a lesson, you know? Like, you know, it's it's quality over quantity. You know, he he has many types of Pokemon, and that's going to help him out throughout his journey. And that's going to help him catch other types of Pokemon. And then, you know, Ash gets super focused and he's like, so I just need to catch lots of Pokemon. And it's like another like it's, weird cut scene. It's so cheesy. It's like, it's very, very cheesy. And, and Misty kind of, you know, is very self-aware of the cheesiness factor of what what just happened. And she's like, gee, he just doesn't get it. <laughs> like, because again, it's he, she's trying to teach him like, you know, 
it, you know, you need one of every type of Pokemon, not 20 Pidgeys. Right. Which I think that's the message that, like, Gary has given off. You know, Cal, he got 30 Pokemon. Doesn't matter what they are. He just caught 30 of them. Right. And then you hear rustling in the bushes. And then you notice that it's like, Mankey pops out. You got that little pig nose. And then, uh, so Ash pulls out the decks. And it's like, Mankey, it's a pig monkey Pokemon. It's a fighting type. Known for its superior footwork. And it packs a powerful punch. And, like, I just cracked up. It was like, pig, monkey? Yeah. Well, the nose, dude. The nose. No, I know. I know. It was just, like, hilarious to hear. <laughs> to actually hear Dex. Exactly. Like, it's a pig, monkey Pokemon. So then Mankey starts dancing around Brock like a hungry, hungry Pokemon, you know, looking for something to eat, you know. And so Brock gives it one of its donuts. Mankey ends up liking it. And Ash being Ash, you know, his first thought is just throw a Pokeball at it. It's a it's a fighting type Pokemon. Let me just throw a ball at it. Well, Misty even says like, "Wait, you know," she sees him reaching for his belt, and and she's like, "Wait a second, you're not just going to throw a ball at it, are you?" Like, she's like, "What are you doing?" You know, and and like that's the thing, you know. And then so he just he just chucks a Pokeball at it, and it's just sitting there on a rock eating its donut, and then it throws the donut at Ash's Pokeball, and the actual like, and this is one of those things that like I thought about like later on. It's like it hit the Pokeball. The Pokeball transformed it, you know, whatever that laser, and it just sucked it in. <laughs> and I'm like, what if they threw that at a human? You know what I mean? Would they get sucked in? You know? I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> it lands on the ground and then it pops open and, and Ash is like, it's a donut? Like, yes, you threw yes, it at you <laughs> and you caught a donut. So he's like, oh, it's a donut Pokemon? And then, you know, Mankey's not happy. He is super angry. And, you know, Ash pulls out his decks again, only to reveal that Mankey has a bad temper and that once it uses Thrash, stopping it is impossible. So the gang is surrounding Ash as he questions, like, what does Dex mean by Thrash? And then they all get spooked, you know, because Mankey begins to chase them. Misty angrily tells Ash, you know, he should have let Mankey finish eating first. Didn't his mother ever teach him manners? And this is funny because it's like a play on words. He's like, she never mentioned mankeys. Right. You know, so like, manners, <laughs> mankeys. I don't know. I, I got a good laugh out of that one. And then Ash comes up with a plan to throw more donuts at Mankey. And so Brock stops and starts throwing donuts at Mankey. And then it just kind of like chops through them and keeps chasing after them. Yeah, they, like obliterates the donut before it, like, you know, as it's about to hit it. He just like punches it and it vaporizes the donut yeah and ash is like oh man it didn't work <laughs> you know, like, he's well, upset i that wasted a donut i wasted a donut <laughs> and they, they you know they're all booking they're all just like running full speed from this manky and misty in like a classic horror movie you know getting chased by a villain type thing trips over a rock and like falls down to the ground and manky is coming full speed ahead and it kind of like launches up over Misty and then as it's cr- passing Missy, Misty in midair it kind of like donkey kicks back and like curb stomps her into the ground it's like yeah it brutal. uses her like a springboard <laughs> like a springboard something. like smashes her head right into the ground and he Mankey flies up and lands like right on Ash's face and just starts pummeling him <laughs> and it just starts like beating him up and this part's really funny because it's like a, a super stereotypical cartoon like you know, schoolyard brawl where it's just all you see is like a giant dust cloud with like fists and feet like poking out. And, you know, for the most part, it's pretty clear to tell that that Ash is just getting his butt whipped by Mankey. And as he's getting beat up, Brock's like, oh, my gosh, you know, Ash, are you OK? And he's like, clearly, I'm not OK as he's getting, you know, <laughs> curb, you know, just completely beat up. Mankey ends up stealing Ash's cap and... You know, this is, you know, we were kind of talking about this a few weeks ago, I think, when we were talking about the release of all the different hats on Pikachu and Pokemon Go. We're like, this episode is kind of where the, the, the potency and the, the, the power of the hat started to be revealed. Yeah, this, this is where we first get the background story of how, like, the hat, you know, and, how, and its importance. So, Mankey steals the cap and kind of, like, runs up to this tree and climbs up to the top, and he's, like, doing a little dance on top of the tree, wearing a hat, and he's just totally mocking Ash. And while this is happening, 
you, it cuts to like inside the binoculars of Team Rocket that's been spying on them from you know the other side of the the, the field or whatever they wherever they are, and they notice that Ash just got his butt whipped, so he's kind of laid out on the ground, and they go, "Look, this is our opportunity. We can steal Pikachu while Ash is down, and you know if we do this." You know, the boss, and of course they're talking about Giovanni, you know, the boss will put us on the board of directors. And James is like, we can rule the world. You got to dream big. Like, it's this whole sequence, you know, it's very <laughs> dramatic. And uh, Meowth even makes fun of James, like, you know, saying, I forget what he says, something like, uh, you know, you know, you're really dreaming. And this is really, really funny how James just takes like a ball of yarn and rolls it across the floor. And Meowth you know, can't resist being a cat and just like jumps on it and starts purring and playing with the yarn. And, you know, da, 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 yeah, exactly. Da, da. It's like, and <laughs> Jesse's like, oh yeah, he's very easily satisfied. Uh, but that was a really funny little cut, but they come back to Ash and Brock and Brock is pretty much explaining that, you know, to Ash, like, dude, you, you just got your butt with by, by Mankey. And uh, Ash immediately starts looking for his hat. Like, you know, and you could tell that this is, kind of a big, de- bigger deal than just like a random hat. And he sees Mankey wearing it at the top of the tree and starts having this, you know, pseudo conversation with it where they're just kind of barking at each other. And Ash explains to Misty and Brock like that this hat is one of a kind. It can't be replaced. It's an official Pokemon League hat, you know, that he won at the official Pokemon, you know, League tournament thing. And it's it the League be, Expo. Uh, the League the Expo. League <laughs> Pokemon League Expo hat. Like, I need a Pokemon League Expo hat. So Ash immediately starts looking for his hat, and he starts going back and forth with, the, like, this pseudo-conversation with Mankey, you know, where he's arguing from, you know, the ground to the top of the tree, just back and forth of how he needs his hat back. And Ash begins to explain to Misty and Brock that this is no ordinary hat. Like, this is... This is the origin story of, you know, the, the what Ash's hat is all about. And this is, you know, something that will affect the Pokemon anime for 20 years because the, the hat is always iconic. You know, that's one of the most, you know, iconic symbols of, of who Ash is and super recognizable. So he explains that he won this hat in the official at the official Pokemon. What is it? What's the name of the event? The Pokemon League Expo. The Pokemon League Expo, and the, what's cool is they cut they cut to this like trailer style animation of like a promo for the the expo, and they show like a Charizard battling a Blastoise and all these crazy things, and they show Pokemon you know this big box open up and the hat comes flying out of the box, and it's like you know all high and mighty of you know Ash's hat, and he goes, look, I had to send in a million postcards for this hat, you know, I'm not giving it up that easy. And, you know, it cuts to Misty, and she's like, oh, yeah, I know that contest. You know, I sent in one postcard. No no wonder I didn't win. And, you know, Mankey is just completely mocking mocking them. And a a funny tidbit here is in this little pseudo promo that they cut for the expo, they spell out Pokemon, Pokemon League on the box that the hat is in, the hat box, and they spell League wrong. Like, they don't complete it. It's just... Yeah, See, have, I didn't notice that. Yeah, you'll have to go back and check it out because, you know, I watched it twice and I'm like, am I missing something here? Or do they just kind of, they spell league and it's just L-E-A-G. I'm like, the U-E is leg. not That's really a leg. there. But I, I thought that was interesting. And don't forget that there was only a hundred of these limited edition Yes, hats. Yeah, this is a legit, collect, you know, Pokemon collector's piece. And it's funny because the, the, the fake weight of how important this hat is is kind of, you know validated by Misty and Brock where they kind of show them both like lo- looking at each other and they go, oh, you know, I didn't know it was an official hat. You know, it's like this is serious business for a Pokemon trainer. And Brock says, you know, losing losing an official hat is like losing your best friend. And they cut to Pikachu. <laughs> Which is like, super, and to Pikachu, super bitter. Pikachu's like, what? Like, really? Really? You, gonna, you know, that that's what you're going to, how are you going to compare this? It's so funny. Yeah, he's like, that's like losing me. That's not okay. <laughs> And so, you know, at this point, you know, Ash is like, you know, I'm getting that hat. He climbs up after Mankey, you know, and just to be beaten up again and like punched or kicked one of the two or all of them just out of the tree again. He does some karate. He's like, what the da? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Team Rocket appears. Da na na. They're just over him. <laughs> you know, and Mankey just takes a second to inspect them and he's just like it's like quick animations, like it's like on top of Jesse and then on top of Meowth and then on top of James. And James says, you know, like, buzz off and just 
kicks it and it sends it flying. Yeah, he like punts it. He just boots it. And then you know, Team Rocket says that they they, they want to borrow Pikachu, but permanently. Right. You know, and then so cuts to Mankey. You see Mankey. He's he's like super angry. You know, just like last time. And so Mankey's super mad behind the rock. You know that Team Rocket kicked him near. And then Team Rockets, they go into their, their motto. And, and this the animation on this motto is really cool. They they kind of added this, like, sparkle effect. And it almost doesn't look like the, the hand-drawn animation. It almost looks like, I don't know, like some kind of, like, light painting or something like that. Like, it's super sparkly on the screen. It really stands out. But I really yeah, like unusual. this. Yeah, I really dug this, the animation that, that kind of goes along, you know, with this particular motto in this episode. You know, and Ash, you know... He, cuts in and he's like i'm having a major hat crisis right now could you try like another time yeah like <laughs> As the, if... it, he really is not impressed with, <laughs> with team rocket like you can tell that, that that he 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 he's not concerned with them as a true threat like it's pretty yeah pretty he's obvious. like seriously guys like not right now <laughs> honestly he's like you've got better things you could be doing right now i'm dealing with more than you know aka just my hat right um, <laughs> And Brock's, you know, he's concerned for Team Rocket. He lets them know, like, guys, if you don't leave now, like, you're going to end up the same way Ash did. And, and like, they're like, what's a Mankey? You know, because the team's trying to explain right. to them. <laughs> and then Mankey appears with his eyes glowing. And it's evolving. Yeah, they, they as soon as Team Rocket turns around and, like, lays eyes on the Mankey for the first time, they witness the evolution, like, happening. So they're like, oh, no. And so it evolves into Primate. And Ash, being Ash, pulls out his decks, and it reads, you know, it says, if you make eye contact, it will chase you forever. <laughs> so, like, both of these two decks entries, like, making it stop chase you is impossible. Like, staring at it will chase you forever. Like, those, that's some serious, like, stuff to handle. And, uh, you know, so Team Rocket's unimpressed, and they ignore Primate. And they send out Eckings and Coughing after Pikachu. And Primate, like, punches Jesse in the back of the head, like, super hard. Sends her flying, like, like straight. Like an arrow. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like she's flying like Superman. And sends her flying face first into a, like, a little rock formation. And her head gets, like, <laughs> stuck in I mean it looks like it gets stuck in it but I mean it's technically it gets crushed into it and then she just like slides down it and this is where she's you know she it cuts to her face like close up and she's like primate you damaged my perfection yeah this is, and she then she says something similar to that last episode she's like you're messing with exactly. perfection here man so yeah. funny. But yeah, she's got like like a double black eye and like band-aids over her nose. Like she's totally smashed up. It's really funny. And at this point, you know, this has now become a personal, you know, mission where she's like, you know, Eggins coughing. Forget about Pikachu. Go after the Prime Ape. And James kind of has her back because Meowth is like, wait, wait, wait. I thought we were here for Pikachu. And James is like, Team Rocket always puts beauty before duty. <laughs> So, Which is absolutely hilarious. So and now they all kind of pile on on top of Primeape. And that same, like, Tom and Jerry cartoon, like... Big dust cloud. Big dust cloud brawl. They all just, like, jump in. So now you have, like, Meowth's foot and then Jesse's hand and then James' leg and all this stuff going. You know, it's just this giant brawl. As this is happening, they decide that, you know, this is their opportunity that Ash and them can make a break for it. So... They want to start running away, and Ash spots his hat on the ground, and he calls out. He's like, oh my gosh, my hat! And just as he's saying that, Primeape has finished his, his butt whoopings of Team Rocket, and Team Rocket's kind of like laid out just in a pile, and Primeape is standing on top of it. And Pikachu goes for Ash's hat, and Primeape jumps right in front of the hat and kind of blocks Pikachu, and they remember that you're not supposed to make eye contact because it'll chase you down forever. This is, you know, a lifelong thing here. So it goes back and forth with this funny animation of Pikachu all stressed out, like trying not to look at Prime Ape in the eyes. So it's like, like, don't look up, don't, look, don't look up, up. don't look up. But it's like super awkward because he's like staring at his crotch and he's like, ah, oh, I can't look up. I can't look up. I'm just going to look at his crotch. It's the weirdest thing. And then it finally makes eye contact and, and the Prime Ape, like he's like, all right, 
it's on, kicks the hat, you know, kind of like hacky sacks the hat back onto his head. And, you know, Ash immediately is like, you better do a Thundershock, like, right now. And Pikachu, without even preparing or thinking or anything like that, just standing there kind of staring at Primeape, just lets off this major Thundershock, and it's a direct hit on Primeape. Primeape is just sitting there, like, frying, and Thundershock comes to an end, and Primeape just kind of, like, dusts his shoulders off a little bit. He just, like, totally shakes it off. But his like whole, you know his fur and everything is just kind of like sizzling. But he kind of shakes it off, and Brock is like, "Wait a second, you know I've got a theory. I, I think I don't think Primate wants to fight us. You know I think he's just lonely and scared. I think he just needs some companionship. And this is totally kind of out of character for Brock. But he just walks right up to Primate and he's like, "Hey buddy, come here, man. Don't you don't, just don't you need to smile? <laughs> like puts his arm around him and stuff like the buddy old pal." And it's really, really funny because Prime just like looks at Brock and he's like, Okay, you want some? And just like unloads on his face and like does this huge like Mortal Kombat uppercut and sends Brock like completely airborne, looking like the doll from last episode, just kind of flinging through the air. And Ash pulls out the Pokedex again, and she points at that Primate, but it's like once Primate uses Thrash, you know, you pretty much can't stop it. Like, you, you, you're beat. And, <laughs> yep. you know, and now, you, you know, it's pretty clear that this Primate is, like, completely fired up and yeah, ready, he's ticked ready off. to go. He's like, you guys you keep making me mad. And so, you know, he uses his Thrash and just starts chasing the team. And they, like, they have an idea to split up, but Primate fo- focuses on Ash. So it cuts to Team Rocket up ahead, and you know, and they're digging a hole in the ground. They love holes. They love holes. They love holes. They're, <laughs> they're looking back when they are startled. To, they startled to see Ash running towards them. He smashes into the hole, and Primate stops at the edge. Ash is like, you know, super surprised to be sees Team Rocket. She's like, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> and they're like, "It's an awkward exchange between them, you know, like, uh." You know, so Ash is super confused, but tells Pikachu to do a Thundershock, which shocks everyone. Primate is just sitting there watching, and then jumps down into the hole and back out to block Ash from trying to get out. Yeah, Ash um, tries kind of like squ- tries to squirm out once once Primate jumps in. And then they stare da- they stare each other down, and Ash has the fla- flashback of Professor Oak telling him that he needs, you know, more Pokemon to be a better trainer. You know, refusing to give up, he's he's determined to catch it. Misty, she advises that Primeape's too dangerous to capture. You know, but Ash is too stubborn to listen, and uh, says, you know, like, you know, if I want to be a real master, a real master would never let a Pokemon get away. And uh, he explains to Brock and Misty that you know, it's just not, it's not just the hat. You know, he wants to catch it so he can become a Pokemon master. Right. Started as the hat. That's what it, that's what the main thing was. But you know, this is. This is this is beyond that now. This is this is a real deal. And he's and he you know this is like one of your favorite scenes. You know he he whips out his Pokeball and calls out Squirtle and he starts the battle. Ash commands Squirtle to use like Water Gun to soak down Primate. Yeah, like I I love the the way this this whole scene progresses. So from this point forward, Ash is in control, and I really like the way they do this. And I, you mentioned before that you know. He has this stubbornness about him, and I think that the stubbornness is what kind of allows him to succeed as a trainer, and what is the one thing that will push him through the rest of this episode is is that stubbornness, because he's refusing to give up, he's refusing to take other people's advice, he's like, look, I need to do this for myself, like, this is this is my, my quest here, I need to become the best there ever was, I'm going for it, and just the way this scene plays out is just really cool. So he pulls out the Squirtle. He soaks down Primeape's head. Now, it's kind of weird that he, he doesn't command an attack here. Like, he just says, you know, soak him down. You know, it's just like, you know, the, the Squirtle uses water gun, just, you know, sprays down the Primeape. And the second that Squirtle is done, he withdraws him, pulls him right back, and in the same, like, breath, throws out another ball and brings Bulbasaur out and commands a raise relief. And... Primeape is able to, like, block, like, Kung Fu style, like, block and push away every single leaf that comes towards him. So that didn't, was, you know, that didn't work out. 
So he immediately brings Bulbasaur back and then brings out Charmander. Now this is like a this is all happening like one, two, three. So this is the first time we've seen like a true wild Pokemon battle. Like, you know, this isn't him just seeing a Caterpie, you know, sitting there and <laughs> tossing a ball at it, you know. <laughs> this is like he's trying and strategizing and using his different Pokemon and this is kind of a play on the whole moral of the story of to be a trainer you need this quality over quantity you need to have a diverse lineup you have to be able to figure out mechanically what will work against what so i thought this was a really cool sequence because it really conveys that message it's like all right i'm going to try my water pokemon and then i'm going to bring out you know another pokemon another pokemon another pokemon see what works but he brings out charmander and Charmander does this massive flamethrower and Primate dodges it and lunges forward and just completely punches Charmander right in the face. And Charmander gets, like, thrown back. And the animation through this whole scene is awesome. It's very aggressive anime, you know, Japan animation style. You know, it's got all the speed lines. It's got all the crazy stills and backdrops and all that stuff is going on. It's very, very fast. And at this point, Charmander is pretty much a punching bag and... Primeape is just, like, letting him go. Like, they're just, he's just, like, 10, 20 punch combinations on poor Charmander's face. Like, he's just getting getting completely rocked. And as this is happening, Ash is kind of, you know, super concerned, obviously. But as he's looking at Charmander, he notices that the flame on Charmander's tail is starting to grow. It's starting to become stronger. And pulls out the Pokedex. Pokedex tells him about the rage attack. And now this is where... Charmander will get stronger and stronger the more it gets attacked. So Ash is like, I didn't know he had this ability. I didn't know this was, you know, he was this this powerful or this could he could do this. Yeah, doesn't doesn't Dex t- like say it like it fights until its opponent falls? F- so basically yeah. it just doesn't stop. Yeah, yeah. So like <laughs> and and it it puts it on display because you see Charmander get like this fire in its eyes, literally, and it's just absorbing punch after punch after punch from Primeape, like right in the face. He's just like Mike Tyson, like unloading on him. And the flame is getting bigger and Charmander's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Charmander starts to like, you know, go ballistic. And he's, you know, looks like he's doing quick attacks and he's dodging and he's letting these flamethrowers out. And it's like a really heated battle. It's really, really, really cool the way it's all laid out in the animation. Ash is pumping up Charmander. He's pushing him along, and he's like, look, this is going to be the, the the finale here. I need you to, you know, unload this massive flamethrower attack. And just before the flamethrower attack hits, Pikachu sneaks in, does like a quick attack, and jumps towards the primate with its mouth. It grabs the hat off its head and kind of scurries away. And just as it scurries away, the flamethrower completely engulfs the primate, like completely engulfs it, and it's just sitting there roasting on it for a couple seconds. The flame stops, and you just see this completely toasted primate kind of like fall face first onto the ground. And, you know, <laughs> Ash doesn't skip a beat. He sees this, you know, wounded Pokemon just, just sitting there. He pulls out a Pokeball, says, you know, he's not going to miss the opportunity throws it out, and I just love the way the scene plays out because this is just like the main series games on the Game Boy. I remember back in the day, just like in Pokemon Go, the Pokemon goes into the po- into the Pokeball, you get the little shake, you get the little light up, and they're kind of like, huh, huh? You know, you could, you could tell they're having the anxiety here. And boom, it clicks in, and Ash has caught, and he truly, truly earned with all his metal, you know, has earned... He had just caught this primate, and it's, like, so climactic. It's awesome. And so at this point, you know, Misty and Brock, they're super happy for him. You know, they congratulate him. Team Rocket from from the hole, they're like, don't forget about us. Yes, they're still in the hole. <laughs> and as they look, you know, Ash, Ash is just like, oh, look, it's the whole gang. Another play on words, and it's it's so funny. And Ash throws primate from the ball back into the hole with team rocket and he just starts punching him until basically punches him straight <laughs> in the air, you know, and they're blasting, blasting off, off again. <laughs> and then, you know, Ash is like, you know, good job primate. And then, you know, he gets a, a black and blue eye primate gives him a nice shiner. Yeah. I, I like this part <laughs> because, you know, it's kind of been 
a display of affection the way Ash kind of gets, you know, the special attack of whatever the that Pokemon is. Like, he's been shocked so many times by Pikachu, and he's caught a couple flamethrowers to the face from Charmander, you know, and now, you know, Primeape's giving him a little bit of that fighting, you know, fury and punching him in tough the love, face. Tough love, tough love. Tough love, exactly. And then Ash says, you know, he'll do whatever it takes to become the best Pokemon trainer. Pikachu notices something in the distance, and the team can see Celadon City at like the whole. Like, basically, they all run towards Pikachu, and then they notice this, that there's Celadon City in the distance. Misty appreciates that you know Primate chased them all this way because they would have never gotten here as fast. Right, and there's a call back to earlier in the episode when Brock was like, "Oh yeah, it's a it's a day's travel away. You know, if, if, maybe less if we hurry." So they, yeah, they, they got chased the whole way there. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, they made good time. And then, uh, so it cuts to Team Rocket, and they end up crashing into a, I would call it a primate nest. Yes. <laughs> but a, a field of primates, you know? And they're like, man, we wish we had some donuts. <laughs> a call back to the end of, like, the beginning where they make you was eating a donut. But there's literally, like, like 30, 40 Mankey and primate. <laughs> Just kinda, yeah, like just honestly, they they should be dead at this point <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because of, you know they they're gonna get chased forever. They they looked at them, they're gonna get chased forever. So maybe they are dead. <laughs> <laughs> this is just like a Twilight. Time. It's, a, it's another another reality. So this was a really cool episode. I I I liked that the scene is kind of set very early on with the Professor Oak thing. He kind of you know in his super cheesy way is able to give a strong lesson, you know, about, you know, you, there's 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 basics here. You can't get ahead of yourself, Ash. You know, if you want to become the best Pokemon trainer, doesn't matter how fast you're going or, you know, what you're doing, you need Pokemon. Like this is the this is the core of what you're doing. And, you know, it was cool to see that lesson kind of play out through the story of him realizing like, look, you know, I got to get my act together. I, I can't let this opportunity slip by. I have a Pokemon that I don't have in front of me. I don't have a fighting Pokemon. I got to do something about this. And it's cool to see Ash kind of just step up and kind of, you take know, charge. take charge. It's, it's, it's cool. And we, we've seen a lot of this, this really cool development happening with, with, with Ash over the past couple episodes. So it's cool to see him step up and, you know, now he's got, now he's back up to six Pokemon, right? And so now he's got a full roster again. Yep. So nice. So good way to go, way to go, Ash. Maybe you can actually earn a gym badge. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> He's just been handed them. So let's wrap this episode up, man. I got a booster. Uh, I, I have an old booster. I have a, I have a breakpoint booster. Breakpoint. Yeah. So what set is that? No. <laughs> and this was the this is the set that I started when I got back into collecting the TCG. This is where I started. So. I do like this set, and um, you know, as far as my completionist bug of collecting, I think this is one of the, mo- the of the recent sets. This is the one I'm the closest to completing, with you know, with the uh, the reverse set and everything. So I like oh, this. Nice, set. Nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's see what we got here. I have Furfrow, Gyarados Spirit Link, C dot. Scizor Spirit Link, Psyduck, Esper, Growlithe, Professor Sycamore, my reverse is a Shinx, and my rare is a non hollow Zeb Strika. Is that the one with the ability? Zap Zone, yes. Ah, that one's good. That one's Damage good. from the attacks of your electric Pokemon isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. Excuse but its me. attack is what you really want. Crashing Bolt. If your opponent's active Pokemon has fighting resistance, this attack does 60 more damage. So 110 damage on a fighting Pokemon, or if a fighting resistance, with two energy. Nice. Yeah, and so that would be used against Evil Tall EX. That was big, and they that was used as a counter to it. So it would do times two damage, so it only has 170 hit points. So you'd one-shot it oh, for wow. just a quick double colorless. Nice. Sweet. All right, what do you got? All right, just a, a a sun and moon booster, and or base set, you know. So I've got a Pikapek, I've got a Carvana, a Togedemaru, 
a Chin Chow, a Makahita, <laughs> Trainer Ultra Ball, a Bulldore, a Timer Ball, a Reverse Hollow Dragonite. Hey, I caught one of those. Yes. And then a Hollow Polyrath. Nice. Okay. That's pretty sweet. I no, think that's, I have that's, the Polyrath. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hollows are good. So I'm I'm really looking forward to to uh, to the new set. Like I, I'm I'm kind of I haven't haven't really bought new cards in a couple weeks, so I'm excited to get into something new next week. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm just I mean expect to see it on Insta Boosters. I mean as long as I can. I mean I think it comes out Wednesday, right? I think so. Yep. Yeah, the fourth. Yeah. Yeah. So. There's a new Charizard GX, and my son is going to go nuts. I can't wait to get that card. Oh, nice, nice. Yes, yes. He is a Charizard person. Charizard. So. All right, so a couple housekeeping things before we completely wrap up. You can find everything about us and the show at gottawatchemall.com. We're pretty much Gotta Watch Them All everywhere. Uh, check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. All the podcasts are up there uh, in audio format as well. I want to give a shout-out to Seth Hay for providing our logo and original website design. Huge shout-out to Grimecraft for providing the intro music. Chippercrit for the outro music. I can be found personally on Twitter at ProudGamerTweet. Adam, where can they find you? At Phoenix Back for Fire. And links to all that stuff will be in the description. Thanks so much, everyone, for listening. And uh, we'll catch you next time on the flip side, episode 25. Turning quarter century old. Yay! Alright, everyone. Have a Thank you all. Later.